This is Cameron's rabbit, Dakota. He was born a meat rabbit. But don't worry, we saved him. Saved for later. <laughs> He's been living in this rabbit hutch now for a few years and it's looking a little rough. Dakota's birthday is in a few days, so I'm gonna build him a brand new two bedroom cottage. Originally, I wanted to build this rabbit hutch super simple, but then I decided, hey, let's take this in a more fairy tale direction. Then it also dawned on me, why am I doing this by myself when I have three little girls who can help me build this? We're using pressure treated lumber for the bottom of the run part of this, and we're also attaching all of the run part using pocket hole screws, because it's fast and easy. Okay, mm -hmm. can you do it? Okay. Try. There is no try. Okay. Do or do not. There is no try. Now, even though we decided to, mm, how shall I say, preserve Dakota the rabbit, we do put him to work. We put him in parts of the garden and parts of the yard when we need to clean up some weeds. He just eats right through the bottom of his rabbit run, so I gotta make sure that this one is also mobile. So this will be the high point of his run, and this will be the low, but we wanna, we wanna add some pizzazz, some flair. Woo! Excellent. <laughs> okay, all right, we can take that off now. Were I a smarter man, I would have figured out all these angles whenever, before we started building, but you know, it is what it is. Cue the builder music. Once we figured out the first angle, I was able to use that piece of drop to figure out all the rest of my angles. There you go. Perfect. Good job. After sanding, I'm going to use the same color paint that we have on the trim of our house, and it's the same color we've used on the chicken run and the chicken coop. Please enjoy these obligatory drone shots of us painting the rabbit run. Wow. You're going to see. See here, see right there? Let me see. Wait. See right there where there's like, that's where the pocket mm -hmm. hole is? And you just kind of glube, glube a bunch of paint in there, okay? Okay. Just glube it in there. A glube? Yeah, a big old glube of it. That's, what, that's, the, that's the professional term is a glube. <laughs> and just beat the devil up. That really is the fun part of this whole technique. Now to keep Dakota safe from in and now do wells, I'm gonna be using this black hardware cloth. And really, if you got animals outside, the way to protect them is with hardware cloth. Don't even think about using chicken wire, okay? Because it does not keep predators out. It only keeps chickens and rabbits from running away. And oddly enough, Dakota doesn't run away. You can actually just set him down and he'll stick around. He actually got out one time and came back and visited us that night and almost got eaten by my dogs. And Anyway, that's a, that's a story for another time. Rabbits can actually be let to roam free, just like chickens. Oh, you missed it. <laughs> oh, well. Go. Now go. Yeah, see, you gotta stay in line with the, with the lines. Mmm, dig that crazy drone footage. That's the last time I'll use it. That is not looking good. The Weather Channel says it's just supposed to be windy today and no rain, but I for shizzle felt a drizzle just a few moments ago. If you couldn't tell, I'm actually into day three, maybe four of this two day project. Okay, and so I am using the drone shots again, okay? But when I'm here by myself and it's really difficult to film myself, it's really easy to shoot the drone up and just capture everything, okay? So just cut me some slack. All these two by fours that I ripped down to one and a half by one and a half are gonna end up being the studs for the cottage. To make sure that Dakota stays cool as a cucumber in the summer and warm and cozy in the winter, I'm using this inch and a half thick foam board on all the walls, the floor, the door, and the roof. Also for the floor of his hutch, I'm gonna be using this PVC so that, you know, if he does the poo poo pee pee thing, it's easy to clean out. For those of you who've watched the channel for a while, you know that we have basically a pet black vulture that we feed named Bruce. You might be wondering where he is. He's right here. There, here's your food. Being a sausage. All right, come on and eat. Bruce was hit by a car being a greedy little buzzard, and we've been feeding him for about nine months now. I'm pretty sure he'd be dead if it wasn't for us, especially my mom.
After routing out the opening for his door, I used the jigsaw to cut out his little rabbit hole. I'm using plywood on the inside walls and not PVC because I think that'll be warmer. So I set the hutch on top of the run for now just to kind of get a test fit and you can kind of see how it is. Originally, the roof line was going to go whoosh, whoosh, but I've changed my mind and it's going to go whoosh, whoosh. I did go ahead and add his little wall so he'll bring his little fluffy butt in right there and he'll be like, oh, this is comfortable, but oh, there's a breeze. And then he'll bring his fluffy little butt over here and then he's got all this room over here. And he's kind of got this wall here to block the wind that might come in. I've got the roof line drawn on here and it's probably really hard to see, but I've got it straight. And I don't really want that. I think I want to put a little, 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 You're probably wondering, with me just bending that piece of wood, how am I going to make sure that my whoops match on each side of the roof? Well, I'm going to trace the first whoop onto the second side, and then I'll flip and trace the other whoop onto the other one, and so forth, and so, you anyway. I'll be honest with you, at this point I started running out of the lumber that I'd purchased for this project and I just started using anything I had available in my shed. Now I'm just putting up some bracing for the roof. And the final piece of insulation. I've run into a small problem with my flashing. I didn't really think about it whenever I put the whoop in the roof line. And uh, as you can see here, a straight flashing uh, no works so well with a curved roof. I believe Confucius said that. And I believe I just got banned. If I try to bend that, it's gonna get a nice ugly kink in it, but there is a solution. Okay, what I have here is a metal expander. It's a lot like a wood stretcher. Lucky for me, there's this thing called YouTube and I went on there and I searched how to put straight flashing on a whoop roof. And turns out this is what you need, a metal stretcher. And also lucky for me, I have a Harbor Freight nearby that had these dirt cheap. Oh my gosh, Becky, look at that bend. It is so big. Let's go check it. Nice. I actually put a little bit, almost a little bit too far with that one. Not the Becky part, but the bend part, because I'm starting to get some rippling in there. And just to prove that, in fact, I do not know what I'm doing. These are all my first attempts because I thought I could use some of this flashing like this, but mm, that's no bueno. And then I thought, well, I'll smash it out and try it. And mm, that's no bueno. And then it finally dawned on me that I could flatten this out. And then that was my first piece where I was like, oh, yes, yes, it is possible. Ooh, lovely, lovely. So we want this paint to, hello, my love. We want it to look kind of like the stucco on the side of the house. Yeah. yeah. But we don't want a stucco. Oh, sorry, extreme close up. We don't want a stucco. So what we're going to do is add some of this sand right here. Yeah. And that'll give us a stucco look. Sound good? Yeah. What kind of sand is that? Mm, it's wet sand. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's just play sand, I think. Mm. Just give it some texture. Oh yeah, yes. Look at that, tell me that don't look like stucco. My gosh. Just got done putting the paint on both parts of the house and it has literally just started to rain. Lucky for me, the strongest Avenger, uh Hacks child was available to help me move everything out of the rain. So I decided to try a little something, something special on this project I've never attempted before, and that's putting down cedar shapes. To be honest with you, this whole project is a test run for a future project that's way, way bigger, although still somehow tiny. Ooh, spoiler alert, this was a bad decision. Stick around and you'll find out why. 
finished putting the shingles on. I'm working in the garage because it's raining outside. But I did want to show you, I made a bit of a boo-boo. All right, see that? I like to show my mistakes because that's what happens. I'm not an expert. I, when I cut the shingles, when I got to the top, because I knew I had to cut them off, I just was like, eh. I just cut them straight off. I should have cut them at an angle. As you see there, I've got that little hole there and I've got the same thing here over here on that side too. But anyway, I'm gonna put the ridge cap on it now and I think I've got an idea how I can at least hide that. Oh, and I blew the continuity because oh, I'm wearing a different shirt. But, but now's a good time to remind you if you wanna get one of these shirts and feed a Haxman child, go to thehaxman.com. I purchased a 10 foot roll of copper off of Amazon and I'm gonna put my lack of metalworking skills to the test here. Look at this hem on this. Man, that's nice, like a professional YouTuber did it. All right, let's see if I can get a bend the other way because <laughs> Haxman ain't got no metal break, okay? And now for some copper and wood ASMR. Right now, to give it the proper English Tudor look, I've decided to stain some pieces of cedar that I cut earlier. Raining again. Whilst my cedar dries, I'm gonna go ahead and spray these iron wheels that I purchased at a local harbour freight, and I think they'll give me a partially period correct look, as opposed to any rubber tires. My local Home Depot had these gate handles that just look like wrought iron gate handles, but they'll be perfect for helping me move around this rabbit tractor. Finally got a break in the weather. This took me much longer than I expected it to. And unfortunately, in that amount of time, Dakota passed. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Actually, but I did miss his birthday, but I don't think he's gonna care. Let's bring Cameron out and see what she thinks of this. Ta-da! What do you think? You like it? Are you happy with it? Let me show you all of the features. So let's start off with it has this easy to remove top. If you ever need to get in there, it's easy on, easy off. We've got his walkway up to his rabbit hole. Semi period correct wheels. If you need to get in the, to the back, and access his two bedroom cottage. You know what, I just forgot. We have to put something on the wall. He needs some decoration. It's a little sparse in there. Cameron painted this piece of art all on her own just to make Dakota feel a little more at home. You see, he's got a little light up in his attic. That's why the light, the yellow light from there. He's got his cedar shake roof like every fairy tale cottage needs to have with his copper ridge cap. He's coming! You may be wondering, Adam, why would you do all of that work for a rabbit? And to that I would say, I didn't. You've seen the rabbit hutch, but what about something bigger? Check this video out right here and I will see you next time.